Okay, I think I found, you know, I made a, a video at some point. Now, of course, all my videos is gone anyway, so it's not really a, But I made a video that actually uh, went, go, went uh, away, you know. So I made the video, but it wasn't there after I'd made it. And I was talking about the, um, the, the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses and... Um, the Mormons, actually I should say the Mormons first, you know, and then the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses and the SDA, Seventh-day Adventist. And of those three, absolutely I think the SDA are the closest in regards of truth. And the SDA are really putting a lot of things out there in regards of who the Antichrist is. Um, at least in Denmark, I've seen a station that seems to upheld who the Yeah, here we go. They actually made this this little guy a booklet. I haven't read it all. Quotes also from Luther and showing what the Protestant actually uh, and in regards of the Sunday being the venerated day of the sun god Sol Invictus in regards of Constantine and all that. And they translated it to Danish. They you know I, they handed me one of these you know and uh, they went out to you know if, in regards of material and all that they have some pretty good material but <laughs> that's the but um they also have some issues and um I've, I've, you know I, I you know maybe maybe i don't hear it because i'm not that much out okay. but i as i understand it they don't keep the festival uh what do you call it they they don't keep the and paul you know have this idea that apparently those festivals are done away with if i remember correctly i think that's that's a quote from ellen g white someplace that i read you know long ago anyway so so both of these guys seems to um oh well um what you know just what annoys me a little in regards of these things is that they you know one thing is that you know they do have some 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 good stuff as well you know um, as you called White, uh, oh, I can't remember his name, but like 40 hours or something like that of a material exposing, you know, Roman Catholicism and all that. That's awesome, you know. Um, but then again, they tend to mix in the SDA doctrines, and uh, you know, it's just if, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's just uh, um, so. One thing I think is an honest thing is to, you know, at least say that you are from the SDA. But like the non-SDA page, uh, you know, uh, which is a former SDA guy that probably knows a huge amount more than I know about the SDA. Um, but he's also talking about that they're told that, you know, they're not, not to tell that they're SDA from the beginning. This, and and that was the you know the conclusion that I also got by re, you know seeing that material and then you see you know hours of hours of material maybe and then you get into uh oh wait 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 this is SDA doctrine you know you might actually you, be, you, be, you become better to sense is this an SDA source or not you know they have a way of actually being pretty clean and you know you get the you know, um but you know down the line they will then begin to, uh, I, I, I think that's dishonest, you know. One thing is to be an SDA and all that and have SDA materials. And yeah, you know, I just think it would be honest just to say from the beginning, hey, this is an SDA, you know, this is from the SDA. This is from the Seventh-day Adventist, you know. Uh, at least, you know, you, you are aware of it, you know, and then you can decide if you, you know. Um, yeah, it's just... Just, I think it's the honest way of, um, yeah, any case, any case, maybe, you know, but, you know, again, they are, you know, uh, in regards to the Antichrist, they do have a lot of good material. And one of these guys that actually had a lot of good material was uh, interviewing uh, Alberto, Alberto Rivera. And Alberto Rivera was, as to be said, a former Jesuit, that was what he said and claimed, and he, pro you know, he might have been and so forward but i'm still you know i'm still having uh but he was attacked on many levels that's for sure and uh, yeah um i'm still you know i'm still you know on it but he did you know he did have a lot of things that was true that was sure 
for sure. And he does speak like a free, you know, that he's like just free to speak the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, he's really... So um, I think the evidence points to uh, Alberto was a, you know, a real brother and all that. But in any case, uh, it's interesting to see that you know, it's hard when you don't know him and haven't been able to, you know, talk to him and so forward and, you know, know him, you know, I, I you know. Um, but in any case, um, so, you know, this, what is, what is he called? He was also killed. Uh, or he, de- he died anyway. Um, but there could be a reason why to kill him off and all that. What's it called? Jim, Jim something. Anyway, he's an SDA guy. And he interviewed different people in regards of the Roman Catholic institution, maniac institution, all that. And he also interviewed Alberto Rivera. And is you know he has like two hours in, on YouTube and all that. And when, when he's talking... I think it's another SDA actually talking to Alberto at that point. Um, it doesn't sound like it's, it's this guy, but, you know, um, I don't know if he's, you know, fixing the film or whatever, you know, there might be others. But one is, is sitting and interviewing Alberto. And you can hear the guy trying to get in the direction of the Sabbath as the mark of the beast and so forward. And Alberto, no, 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 he, he's just, you know, he's just, flat out pretty much you know no he, he talks about you know as i see it you know that's not of really of of course it's still a command and all that but he is he's sure you know um he's not g- going on that wagon and i, I think that's that's uh show some credibility as well in alberto as well you know and again when you you know he's, you know, he's trying it seems he's just trying the best that he can it seems you know and he's talking about what he knows and yeah it's it's really you know it's just, yeah. Again, when you have all this, you know, again, if, if Alberto was for real, again, you would expect a lot of attackers to attack him. And again, when you read that material and all that, you know, things should come up here and there of issues, you know. If, 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 if I went deeper into it, you know, there are at least two other books out there that was released in regards to this guy that I, I've heard about. Um, and... You know, I've seen material and all that, and just seems, it seems like it, it, you know, they, they were just trying to, to miss, 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 what is it called, discredit him. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I, anyway, let's go get back to the topic. Um, so this is the non-SDA page, and I was actually reading it all, like, I guess it's a long time, a year ago, two years ago, or something like that. I'm not in. I can't find the original page, but the beginning seems to be somewhat of the same. Anyway, uh, I'm going to read it anyway, so, you know, I thought, you know, just put it on the internet. But again, the SDA does have some 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 great, uh, you know, things and all that. But again, one just has to be aware of the extra material and, uh, you know, um... It's, it's just sad. I just, you know, I just, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'll get better to, to sniff out the, the issues as time goes, I guess. But, um, you know, if you take those three, you know, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and the SDA, I think the SDA absolutely have the most truth uh, of those three. Uh, that's my my experience of it anyway. Um. But it's nice to see that, you know, Alberto Rivera is pretty much quickly deflecting this, you know, that, no, 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 we're not talking about, you know, and he talks about another view and in regards of how uh, the Roman Catholic Church will deceive uh, the SDA that they already set up for deception from the, from the Roman Catholic Church and all that. Uh, anyway, um, so not, not just speaking, you know, uh, you know, he, he, he has his, you know, you can hear the guy has has some, you know, some of his own. He's not just speaking uh, people, you know, and saying just, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's not, he's having his own, he's done his own studies and all that. That's, uh, anyway. Um, so William Miller, was he really a great reformer? So, and again, actually, as far as I know, William Miller's, he seems, 
you know, what I know at least, you know, it seems like he was trying to do his the best of his possibility to, to figure things out. And then he made this dating thing and that failed. And then another, some others made a dating in regards of a year, you know, later. And Miller apparently ended up jumping on that wagon as well. And after that, Miller seemed to have gone... You know, he didn't. He he didn't want to to. Uh, you know, he thought this this. You know, he was wrong. You know, I, I. It seems like William Miller understood that he was wrong. You know, he had failed. You know, um. Uh, so um, yeah. Anyway, but then others was you know couldn't apparently accept that he was wrong and made this eight what is like closed door doctrine and all that. Anyway, um. William Miller was he uh, really a great reformer? William Miller was born in 1782. He began attending school at age 9 and continued until the age of 18, after which he had no further education. Now, of course, you don't. In regards of education, I think education is, you know, you can be educated against education, you know. You know, learning against learning, you know. That's like uh, the Roman Catholic Church, learning against learning. So, you know, um, anyway, he married in 1803 and began farming. As a young man, he rejected his Baptist upbringing and became a theist. So what is a theist? Is just in regards of God or let's see here, theist. I can't remember. I think I've seen. A person who believes that God created the universe and didn't abandon it, okay. Or a non-religious person, okay. Well, that's not really how, maybe a, sh okay. Anyway, uh, of course God has not, you know, he's still playing a role. I think if, if God was not playing a role, you know, Satan would probably have just totally swallowed us up, you know. Hmm. Um, and of course, we have the Holy Spirit as well working, you know, leading the Christians and so forward. Um, anyway, so to say that God is not, uh, but anyway, okay, whatever. Um, he married in 1803 and began farming as a young man. He rejected his Baptist upbringing and became a theist. Miller became a Freemason and advanced to the highest degree, which the largest then in the country on that religion could confer. And then we have some kind of one, I guess it must be down here. In regards of one, uh, that's in regards of Sylvester Bliss, memories of William Miller. Okay, yeah, well, okay. So, of course, in regards of being a Freemason, uh, that's not good. That's a bad sign, uh, whatever the case, you know. Um, but, of course, one can make mistake, right? You know, in regards of, you know, I would, you know, to, to be a Freemason and then find out, uh oh, I was wrong and then get out of it again, you know, and that should be possible, I think, even if you're taking all these so called oaths and all that. But, you know, it's just, um, um, you know, when I was in can Satan's candy show, candy store. Now, I never took any oath and all that, you know, I was, you know, seeking truth in regards to the truth movement and all that. But, uh, yeah, and I came out of it, you know. Um, of course, Freemasonry, you take oath and all that, too, you know. Uh, but yeah, why wouldn't why wouldn't God be able to uh, you know um, you know save uh, a Freemason and so forward, or or maybe even one that had sit in the position of the Antichrist? I don't know if any one of of those sitting in the position of the Antichrist has ever been saved and all that, but you know. Um, who knows if God wants to save, you know, the, he's probably going to be killed if that's the, you know, I don't know. Anyway, um, but it could be cool to be a, <laughs> a guy in that position to actually be, you know, come out of it, uh, of this uh, most satanic system. But I guess he would probably not be, uh, he would probably not uh, live that long. I'm not sure. Of course, God could protect him, you know. Um, anyway, as a young man, he rejected his Baptist upbringing and became a theist. Theist Miller became a Freemason, advanced to the highest degree. You know, for example, uh, Alberto Rivera, you know, if he was a Jesuit, which he, he claimed he had been, and I think 
probably could be true, you know. Um, well, he was saved, so, and he came out of it. So Miller became a Freemason, advanced to the highest degree, which the largest then in the country and that region could confer. I do wonder how, how you know, how uh, far that would go. I just saw something in regards to Freemasonry in Denmark, and you know the the guy that apparently is one of the high you know high guys in the says that there's eleven, but Wikipedia says there's thirteen in regards to Denmark, and the last one being in regards to this cross that you know this cross looks like actually the Knights of Malta cross. <laughs> Funny enough, uh. So, um, and this Knights of Malta cross is, you know, behind the throne they have in at least one of these rooms. I've seen pictures of that and all that. Uh, any case, and it seems uh, some, some of those highest, high, high uh, ranking people in society uh, seems to be Freemasons. Uh, I have to look more into that. And of course, if, if Rome is controlling Freemasonry, well, you know, and there was something in regards of of the high highest court in Denmark actually also being controlled by uh, people into Freemasonry. Uh, again, that's something to uh, you know if one wants to find out who the controllers actually are is in this. I've seen a picture of our queen going, you know, with the English queen, and the English queen is sitting with the Knight of Malta sign, and I can't remember if. The Danish queen is actually uh, sitting with something. I don't think she was, but I can't remember. And I, you know, it's just, uh, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, Miller served in the, and of course we see the prime minister go to Rome. And having a blessing from the Antichrist and all that. We had an article on that from, uh, yeah, actually we have uh, multiple articles, but there was one um, that actually got further into it, you know, so actually told that in regards to the, you know, that that the nowadays uh, poop was a Jesuit and it's, you know, kind of a problem that, uh, you know, prime minister of a Protestant country, or at least, you know, was a Protestant country, goes down to the Antichrist. Well, they didn't say Antichrist, but anyway. Mm. But it was the best article I could find in regards to this event. Um, so Miller served in the War of 1812 as a captain and afterward renewed his uh, Baptist faith. That was, by the way, asking one of these guys that is uh, making this new party in regards of uh, in regards of if he was a Freemasonry. I know I, I apparently didn't give a he didn't give me the answer for that. But he told me that he, had, that he wasn't into uh, Roman Catholicism. and So that's at least he's... But again, huh, you know, you can be on... It seems like... It seems like it's the Freemasonry that is pretty much mostly out in the visible light here in Denmark. The question is then who is... You know, who are the... You know who are the string pullers of the mess mess so mess thing. Anyway, I found this guy that is apparently is um um is an what is it called? He, he's educated as a you know research or something like that. You know, uh, uh, what's it called? Writing about things and all that. I'm. See, now, uh, see if I can get a hold of him and, and ask him some questions. He seems to actually be interested in that subject. I, I was uh, calling some other guys that had made these books about the, the controllers of Denmark and something like that. We apparently, you know, the, the one of those guys I, I called uh, absolutely was not on the same page. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Anyway, and he didn't think that anyone could hide anything and all that well if you're taking an oath and uh, that oath is in regards to slitting your throat from one year to another year well that might be a thing that you're not going to tell anyone about you know some secrets some things you know i remember i was uh, in a in a sauna you know a warm place and all that and many different people comes and i uh, that was um, uh, that was one that I, you know, talked to and I found out he was a Freemason. And uh, 
And just out of the sudden, you know, he stopped talking, you know. And I think he remembered his oath, or maybe one of his oaths, one of his many oaths, in regards of not speaking about uh, these things and all that. So I didn't really get much information out of him besides, you know, knowing that he was a Jesuit. No, sorry, a Freemason. <laughs> sorry, my bad. My uh, slip of the tongue. Um, so anyway, Miller served in the War of 1812 as a captain and afterwards renewed his Baptist faith. Now, it also seems that some of these high-ranking people seem to also get pretty high in regards of, you know, uh, military as well, or can get high in military. Um, so that, of course, would be... Anyway, and afterward renewed his Baptist faith. Miller began studying the Bible intensely and in 1880 he, became to the, he came to the conclusion Christ was going to return in 1843. And that's, of course, interesting, and it's, of course, wrong. I can't remember if, if there was a guy that had, like, you know, but that was maybe in regards of another, in regards of date setting and all that. Um, anyway, I just, you know, looking at the Bible, I'm not sure how they could actually, you know, come to these conclusions, um, you know, following, but, of course... Maybe they, you know, they didn't have the internet as we had to look at the world on a global scale, um, you know. Um, so, and Luther, you know, also ended up, and a lot of the Lutherans and the Protestants, a lot of them thought that this was like, you know, getting close to the end of that end of days. Anyway. And they were wrong, you know, because 500 years later, we are still sitting here, right? Um, so, you know, you really have to be careful in regards to these settings of, you know. And and the hall is not destroyed yet. So, you know, uh, in regards to the book of Revelation, you know, the hall is still, is, you know, Rome is still there, you know. It's not destroyed. And the Antichrist is, you know, he hasn't gotten his absolute power yet, you know, in regards of, those ten kings giving the power to him, as far as I can understand it. So, um, and those ten kings will destroy the whole, you know, in one single day, you know, in regards of, you know, according to the book of Revelation. So, um, so as I see it, you know, it's, <laughs> but we are getting closer to a world, you know, uh, a one world government, right? Uh, under the wings of the Antichrist. So anyway, now, of course, when the whole is destroyed, the Antichrist will continue. So you have to be, you know, just the Antichrist is in the head position of the Roman Catholic Church. And of course, we have the shadow, uh, his shadow in regards to the Roman general. But in the, you know, in the in the future, the whole will be destroyed. Yet the beast will continue. So the beast will still, you know, the 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 seat and the office of of the beast will continue. So he's not going away. The Roman emperor is still going to continue. Even if this system, you know, I guess Satan doesn't need this system anymore. So I guess there probably will be two levels, you know, that God will put it in their heart to destroy this Roman, uh, uh, this, uh, this um, system. And on another level that Satan probably don't need it anymore to deceive the world, you know, because you already have the full power at that point. He has absolute po power that, you know, I would think. Anyway, that's future things. And I, what do I know? You know, I'm just trying the best that I can. I might be totally wrong. I'm just trying the best that I can do. Anyway. Miller served in the War of 1812 as a captain and afterwards renewed his Baptist faith. Miller began studying the Bible intensely. You know, it's, it, it, it is interesting that so he's both a Freemason, he's into Freemason at least here in regards of... Um, Miller became a Freemason and advanced to the highest degree which, which the largest then in the country or in that region would confer. Now the question is, of course, how high could he go at that point? Um... Again, at Denmark, they say that we only have either 11 or 13 steps in, in regards of Freemasonry. Um, you know, they could, you know, they could be lying, you know, who knows? Uh, they could just say something and not really, you know, they, we might have more. I don't know. But of course, Denmark is not that big of a country and all that. So maybe, 
maybe there's only need of 11 or 13 you know uh, steps um who knows but uh whatever you know i don't you know i don't know much of you know um i don't know that much about the, these things but it does seem to be you know that does seem to be pointers of the you know the freemasons actually being in higher positions uh in this country and of course then the freemasons is and uh, you know when you begin to understand the jesuits the jesuits can sit on the sideline you know so if you have a debate like the right and the left or the red or the blue or whatever you know they will sit subtly in some sense at the sideline and you know um uh, and then we have these, um, you know, these, uh, what is it called? Uh, spin doctors. They even call them spin doctors. <laughs> they don't really hide much, do they? In regards to spin doctors. And you, and as I understand, the, the prime minister that is, by the way, a woman here in Denmark now. Uh, and do I have any problem with a uh, woman running the... Yep, I actually do. Uh, and also in regards of churches you know because a man don't really want you know we have enough of feminism and listen you know these women you know rebellious women and all that i think a man is is a much better choice you know um for for having men to listen to you know because you know and i think many men already have this nagging of a lot of you know women because they're so rebellious today and then going to a then going to a, a meeting house and listening to another woman, you know, <laughs> nagging him, you know, in some sense, that might not be the best thing to actually, uh, you know, um, actually uh, make a man want to listen, you know. It's just, it's not like, you know, of course, if you follow Paul, he says that, uh, you know, he do doesn't allow a woman to actually, but we do have, we do have women uh, prophets in the Bible, uh, you know, before Jesus and all that. Actually, you know, oh, actually, we have, yeah, we have when he's born, for example, there's a woman in the temple uh, prophesying in regards of, of Jesus or something like that. Uh, I can't remember the direct words. And we at least have one also in the so-called Old Testament. And that was probably more, um, you know, in the, that, you know, serve God. So it's not like you can't serve God when you are a woman and all that. I just think in regards of a man, if a man goes to uh you know, he probably don't want to he have a woman, you know, speaking to him about, you know, you know, just, I guess it's a man thing, you know, just uh, all these feminists that we're already surrounded with, not the best idea to put a woman in the position of a, of a shepherd, I think. And again, it's not that it can't be, you know, that she can't just, I just, I just think, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it, it might not be the best extra attraction for other men, you know. Um, yeah, just, just, that's just uh, the thing, you know. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, as a young man, and of course, the men is those that ha are to lead the family. You know, the women have other jobs to do, uh, you know, in regards of support and in regards of making food and all that. You know, it just seems to be other ways of, of, of being able to, you know, serve. And, uh, yeah. And the same thing with having a woman queen in a, in, a, in a country. Just totally feminizing, you know. And this woman was married to a man. Well, if you're, a woman, if you're married to a man, what does the man become? Well, he becomes a king. And all this, you know, in regards to the rule of kingship and all, yeah, anyway, uh, I shouldn't be going off, off straight, but I think we're totally, you know, Satan has totally flipped things around. And all this promotion of feminism is just total destruction of society. Um, he married in 1803 and began farming. As a young man, he rejected his Baptist upbringing and became a theist. And Miller became a Freemason and advanced to the highest degree, which the largest then in the country or in that con or in that re region could confer. Yeah, and by the way, in regards to reading about the Jesuit, you know, again, they're sitting in in some sense subtly. I, you know, I know one place in Copenhagen that I might find some of these people that uh, pull pulls the threads um 
You know, that might be that the best place to, but they might have a lot of, of hidden Jesuits around, you know, so uh, it should be the Jesuits that are pulling the strings of Freemasonry, you know, on the top level. So, um, and so it might, if you dig into it, it might look like the Freemasons are in control in Denmark. Uh oh, we have a problem with the, and I'm even on the, yeah, that's sad. I could try to, open the line here. Oh well. Okay, I'm not sure if that's going to help. Now we have 40 and we have, uh, I think that's something like it can actually, you know, go from one network to another. So let's, let's see if it actually works now. Um, so let's see here. I'm not sure how it works. So in any case, so he was a Freemason at some point, advanced to the highest degree. That would be, you know, a concern for sure. He's advancing to a captain. A captain is, I think, is a pretty high standing position, if I remember correctly. Uh, I haven't been in the military, but I think it's it's some of one of the higher positions. Um, so that's interesting as well. When you see like Freemasonry in regards of uh, apparently in regards of high level military guys and all that. Um, so Miller began studying the Bible intensely and in 1880 he became 1818 he became uh, he came to the conclusion that Christ was going to return in 1843 based upon his understanding of Daniel 814. His first he first presented, his finding is a document in a document published in 1822. In 1831, Miller was ordained as a Baptist preacher, and he began lecturing in various churches, sharing with them his theories on Christ's imminent return. Now, again, what was he still a, a Freemason at that point, or you know, do we know anything about that? Anyway, while Miller never personally set an exact date for the return, he claimed. My principles in pre brief are that Jesus Christ will come again to this earth, cleanse, purify, and take position of the same with all the saints sometimes between March 21, 1843 and March 21, 1844. And we have a source for that apparently, but anyway. Uh, of course, uh, the SDA also have this doctrine in this weird, it, again, it seems like the SDA have a lot of, of doctrines in regards of uh, prophecy, which is just not, uh, which just seems to be, you know, taking the wrong turn. Um, but they also have some things that are true, and that's that's, that's the danger. You know, they have some they have some truth, and they you know, ah, just it's it's a very slick. You know, uh, again, Satan has a deception on every single level. Uh, it's. Um, like for example, they believe that that Jesus is, you know, that that we, you know, that the thousand years are not on Earth. Well, that's not, it's not historical, and it's not biblical, you know. And they, uh, as I understand it, they believe that then Satan will be on Earth and all. But uh, Satan will be, you know, you know, he will be, you know, sealed for a thousand years, and then Jesus, God, will. Uh, rule the whole world from Jerusalem, the na you know, and at that point we will come up and celebrate Sukkot. And if we don't come up and celebrate Sukkot on that point, which is one of the festivals written in the Bible, we, you know, the nation will be punished. Um, it seems to me, and I might be wrong, I'm still researching, but it seems to me that there will be people at that point that will have gotten their new uh, body, uh, you know, in regards to being resurrected with Jesus Christ. And there will still be nations, it seems, that can still die. So that's as far as I can see it, uh, that there will, pe will be people, and there would, of course, be needing people to, to you know, help uh, govern 
the kingdom of of Jesus Christ at that at that point. I would you know to do uh, to be servants of the king, right? Um, and regards of yeah, so. Uh, as far as I understand it, people can still die at that point. Uh, you know, uh, some of the people. And they will still have the ability to, to either reject Christ or accept Christ, you know. And then we have the second resurrection uh, after the thousand year reign on earth. I'm not, I might be wrong in regards to this, you know, but... Uh, you know, that's that's as far as I can collect off the puzzle pieces to my understanding at this moment. Um, that we have a lot of prophecies which have not yet been fulfilled. And to, and for those to be fulfilled, again, that, you know, that Jehovah will come back and then you will know that Jehovah has sent me. So Jehovah is coming and then they will know that Jehovah has sent, sent me. You know, it's Jehovah speaking, but then, you know, again, we have these plurality in regards of the Godhead. Um, so anyway, of course, we know Jesus is the one coming back. So if Jesus is going to rule from Jerusalem, that would be Jehovah, and he would be sent by Jehovah, you know. Anyway, um, so my principles in brief are that Jesus Christ will come again to this earth, Cleanse, purify, and take possession of the same with all the saints sometime between March 21 to 1843 and March 21 to 1844. 40, yeah, 44. So it seems actually that he also seems to have the understanding that Jesus will come to this earth. Will come again to this earth. At least this doesn't say that, you know, that the saints will be taken to heaven, you know, for a thousand years. Uh, well, anyway, I haven't, you know, gone deeper into the uh what these guy you know you can use your whole time on you know using these uh anyway miller managed to garner a small following and his disciples called called him by the affectionate term prophet miller and that's a really bad term that's a that's a really big red flag you know again and so-called father miller what did jesus say don't call anyone on earth father America, you know, don't, you know, just a, a, a huge warning flag. And yet, apparently, he was called so-called Father Miller. Bad, 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 I think. Uh, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. All of us are equals. And the greatest, greatest of us should be the smallest, you know. Um... You know, Jesus said, you know, even if he was our master, he came to serve. So even if he was, you know, he was serving, you know, and that's the idea that we should, you know, we shouldn't be like, you know, you know, governing over others. Like, you know, it's just, um, so anyway, after March 21, 1844 pa passed, Prophet Miller admitted his mistake to his followers. So he's admitting that he, you know, he made a mistake. Okay. And so at least he's so, you know, at least he's honest enough to come forward and say, hey, uh oh, we have a problem again with the connection here. It is interesting because last time I made the video on the SDA and all that, I think it made two or three hours of uploading these things. And of course, I can't use the YouTube uh, program either because then you have to have a thousand followers. Anyway, Miller managed to garner a small following and his di disciples called him by... It's actually pretty stupid, isn't it? That you are you you can actually use other programs to make some live recordings that is not fixed in regards of of YouTube, but you're not allowed to use that tool to actually upload anything. You know, that's just just stupid. You know, um, that that does it doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you be allowed to use you you know the your YouTube tool? Uh oh oh no! I've just pulled a oh, coffee. Oh my. Oh well, anyway. 
So Miller managed to garner a small following with his disciples called him by the affectionate term Prophet Miller and Father Miller after March. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he, he, he understands that he's wrong. When a new date, October 22, 1844, was Proposed by Samuel Snow, prophet, so-called prophet Miller, whatever you want to call him. Apparently, he was wrong in regards of this, so uh, might not uh, might not be the best thing to call him a prophet, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, he at least failed with the so-called prophetical thing in regards of when Jesus had to return. Oh, two seconds here, yeah, just the coffee thing. Just poured coffee out. Um, so when a new date, October 22, 1844, was proposed by Samuel Snow, prof, so-called Prophet Miller, I don't know why they're calling him Prophet, you know, uh, was at first reluctant to endorse it. So it seems like Miller understood, you know, this doesn't really... However, Snow eventually convinced Miller, who signed an endorsement of the date in early... October 1844, on October 12, 1844, Miller published this letter to the editor of the Midnight Cry. Now, this, this is information I remember having read, but he might just have copy-pasted uh, some of it from another page that he had, but I've not been able... Uh, maybe I should write to him in regards of if, 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 if this is not the, the, the page, because it seems like there's some other information on this page as well. But anyway, he says, I thank God for this light. My soul is so full, I cannot write. My doubts and fears and darkness are all gone. I see that we are yet right. Dot, dot, dot. And my soul is full of joy. My heart is full of gratitude to God. Oh, how I wish I could shout, but I will shout when the King of Kings comes. Now, I think a lot of these um, these Christians um, uh, was actually just looking for Jesus Christ. But we do also have, and that was probably in regards to this article, where we had other Christians, warning Christians about this, this, you know, this group. But it doesn't mean that they didn't get things right because a lot of Christians believe that they're going directly to heaven when they die or hell and so forward. They have this heaven-hell doctrine, which as far as I can see is absolutely not biblical, uh, both from the Bible and historical and so forward. Uh, but anyway, when we die, we're going to show all, you know, the realm of death, awaiting the resurrection. We are sleeping and so forward. I think the SDA seems to have gotten that doctrine correct and actually have, uh, you know, actually uh, are correct on. And I think the, Jeho the, the false Jehovah's Witnesses, I don't know what to, you know, the, the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, I think they... Um, they, uh, I think they believe the same doctrine as well. So, I think there might be some websites out there that they actually take all these different groups and just, uh, what do you call it, uh, take all the doctrines that they believe and just concentrate it so you can see the differences. Would actually be nice. Because again, just because a group uh, has some issues doesn't mean it, ha it doesn't have its, uh, you know, it doesn't mean it doesn't have some truth. Like, for example, in regards to the false witnesses, they do have Jehovah as the true name of, of God. And they have put that in the Bible version. Now, of course, they have tried to write out the, the, the divinity of Jesus Christ. But anyway, which, you know, is why I have a problem calling them so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, because they're denying that Jesus is Jehovah. That is blasphemy in the, in the eyes of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, the false witnesses, whatever, um, which is a problem, you know. I was also interesting in that translation that they actually have a uh, a Freemason term, it seems, uh, in regards of where they trans. I think it's like three times or something like that, where the uh, where they use a Freemason term in regards to the translation, and it's. Oh, I can't remember what, you know, but that was, in, yeah, that was interesting. Any case, um, whatever, you know, you can use your whole life studying these faults. Uh, uh, you just stand on the truth and then, you know, anyway. 
I thank God for the... Yeah, okay, we had that. Oh, how I wish I could shout, but I will shout when the King of Kings comes. Me thinks, I hear you say, uh, Brother Miller is now a fanatic. Or at least he uses brother here. Is now a fanatic. Very well, call me what you please. I cannot. Christ will come on the seventh month and bless us all. So here again, he's saying that Christ will come. So he already failed once in telling when he, he, he should come. And then it's, you know, he agrees to this next dating and that fails as well. So after the failure of 1844 date, Miller withdrew from public ministry, but continued to look for the imminent return of Christ on, until his death in 1849. And then it gives the, in regards to five. So you see, it seems as far as I understand that Miller, underst you know, he, he not only withdrew, withdrew from public ministry, as I understand, he also withdrew from, uh, uh, from, the, from these groups trying to, you know, make their own doctrine. As I understand it, but that's as far as I have read and studied and my, you know, as, as the sources that I have, uh, have looked at. It seems Miller actually understood, you know, these groups, you know, it's, it's failed, okay? It's failed, just accept it, let's move, you know. And instead, these groups couldn't accept it. And instead of just accepting that they, that it, it was, they, that they were wrong, they, you know, build on the lie. <laughs> They, you know, which was clearly a lie or what do you, you know, it was clearly wrong, you know, yet they built on the wrong doctrine, you know, further to explain, you know, to, <laughs> and that's just, you know, anyway, let's see here. William Miller endorsed by Ellen White. So Ellen White wrote fondly of so-called Father Miller, uh, believing him to be a modern day John the Baptist, but at least he failed twice, uh, according to in regards of these uh, when Jesus would return. As John the and again, again, it's just curious that we have a one that has been into Freemasonry. He has a high rank in the military, it seems. You know, uh, now of course he could have been converted by you know reading the Bible and so forward. But just be be aware that he has the background of freemasonry to the highest rank according to this that he could take um that's just you know that's some you know red flags at least you know it's just uh and in regards of being called so-called father is another red flag so at least i think i i you know three red flags as, as you know that i would be aware of of course again it wouldn't mean that he couldn't have turned around in regards of freemasonry but at least he was. He knew in regards of Freemasonry and so forward. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, and I think there was something in regards of images, in regards to the gravestone st of uh, of uh, Ellen, Ellen White as well, in regards of this was like pyramid or this uh, phallus. I can't remember. Uh, I guess one could actually look it up if, let's see here, gravestone of. I do wonder, maybe the gravestone of. And they will excuse it that everybody used that at a time. Eh. And let's see, gravestone. Let's see, actually, gravestone of William Miller. Uh, Miller. Okay. Let's see here. I'm thinking about the, you know, the capstone as well on the top, right? Um... Uh, you know, I think in regards of a grave, if I ever, you know, a great gravestone would be, uh, you know, a cornerstone, not a top stone, you know, but a, a but a subtle, what shall we say, a hum, 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 humility of a of of a, you know, of a of a cornerstone. Uh, gravestone, William Miller. Well, that's Robert Miller. Okay. Oh, that doesn't really look like there's anything uh, wrong in regards to William Miller. Gravestone, as far as I can see. Um, uh huh. Um, no, it, it looks. If this is the gravestone. No, that's. No.
Miller Cemetery. Okay, let's take the other one. Okay, uh, gravestone. Uh, what's he called? Uh, Ellen White. Ellen White. Ellen White. Ah, oh, this was the first day in Denmark where it actually become cold. I had my window open, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cold in the night. I didn't go up, and oh no, we have. Where's the? Oh, here we go. They might have. I think there was something about that they actually replaced it. But uh, here we go. That's white. I can't see if it. You know, again, the quality of this browser with the images. That doesn't mean that the images are actually bad. But uh, isn't it interesting that she has a a red penis standing there? If that is actually. Uh, um, I don't know if I can actually make the quality better if I say request desktop site. Um, but Google have this thing of, as I understand it's Google and the fault of, um, oh here we also have another one. Um, That's Henry White, so that's not Ellen White. Uh, anyway, you can see this uh, uh, erect phallus, you know, in 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 front of of uh, the hot. What do you call it? Uh, in front of um, in front of the Antichrist. Uh, oh, here we go, Ellen G. White. It seems that actually says. Now I haven't seen it with my own eyes and so forward, but it seems to be pretty legit. Or oh, legit. Um, there's a lot of pictures of it anyway. I have another phallus. I'm not sure what plate. Uh, again, I would need to use the computer to actually get into uh, being. But but why would you have you know? And some will excuse this of. Um, I think it actually was from the SDA sources that they will ex excuse this of using this that everybody used these, you know, in that time. I don't think that's an ex excuse when you know that that um, I think it's Freemasonry that also loves this sign. Um, so, and what it's, you know, it symbolizes the, you know, male organ or what is, you know, male, yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, yeah, I guess, you know, sorry, it's not going to be better quality than this. Um, again, because of the browser and Google, um, you know, the same thing with Facebook and all that. The, this browser just, you know, um, it only gets the first image. So the image that you usually get on the browser, the first image that is in very bad quality, uh, it never gets the real image, you know, the real good quality image. And I'm not entirely sure why uh, this browser doesn't do that. Um, but uh, yeah, as, as far as I understand, it's actually Google and Facebook and others that actually destroys the, you know, this browser. So I've seen, you know, things where, you know, where these companies do things so the browser can't do what it should be able to do. Um, so it's not the browser's fault. It's these big companies that do these things on purpose. So, uh, so you might be forced to use their browsers, right? You know, like the Google browser. Um so you don't have all these problems that they intentionally make, you know, on purpose. It's just, it's so, it's criminal. It's, I don't, I don't want to take, you know, it's, it's so disgusting, but that's how the world is, is run and it's very sad. And when we as a people just run along with it and just, you know, change browsers to what they want and blah, blah, blah. Well, they pretty much win, don't they? William Miller endorsed by Ellen White. Ellen White wrote fondly, fondly of so-called Father Miller. Again, already there. You know, if you're reading the Bible and it's, you know it's pretty clear, don't call anyone on this earth father. So why would you do it? And of course, the Roman Catholics have this same thing of uh, you know, and they will excuse it and 
You know, I don't think there's any excuse of it, you know. But they will, of course, they have had hundreds of years to make it, you know, the devil has his ex- excuse, excuses. Uh, but, I, 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 you know, it's just disgusting. Um, uh-oh, whoops. Oh, this is really not going good. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, um... And then White yeah, wrote fondly of so-called Father Miller, believing it, you know, and, and I know that some of the SDA doctrines are, the, you know, are pointing that they actually are in the direction of the Roman Catholic Church, like in regards to the brothers of Jesus. Well, Ellen G. White, according to her book, says that these brothers are older brothers. Now, maybe you wouldn't, you know, you know, it's not in the New Testament, if you read the New Testament, there's nothing about the brothers of Jesus being older brothers. And if you actually just understand it from a New Testament understanding, well, of course, Mary had, you know, was known by her husband. And when your husband is knowing you, sometimes you become pregnant, right? And uh, thereby you have children. Um, but if you look at the Roman Catholic understanding in regards of that, uh, that they believe falsely that Mary was an everlasting virgin and all that, well, then of course you have to make an excuse of these four brothers and two or three or more sisters that Jesus had. And thereby, um, you know, we have the names of the brothers, but we don't have the names of the sisters, at least not in the New Testament. Uh, we have some outside sources uh, in regards of, but anyway, um, um, in any case, if you want Mary to be an everlasting virgin, and by the way, the New Testament, of course, says that Joseph knew Mary. So that just totally ruins the Catholic doctrine already there. But if, if, you, um, if you want to have her ever, as an everlasting virgin, you also have to, you know... You know, find a thing in regards to these children, these brothers that uh, Jesus have, and thereby they have invented this doctrine or idea that Joseph had children from another marriage. So, of course, the New Testament never says that. But anyway, um, anyway, Ellen Ellen Wright wrote fondly of uh, yeah, so forward. Um, so if you see that they have, in regards to the Roman Catholic understanding, and then look in regards to the material of Ellen G. White, in regards to this, you know, it might be a, you know, it's a subtle thing, and that's the thing, and that's the danger of it, I think. Um, so, yeah. And that's just one thing, and I, I'm sure I could find others if I began to read the books and all that. Um, okay, let's see here. So she says, As John the Baptist heralded the first advent of Jesus and prepared the way for his coming, so William Miller and those who joined with him proclaimed the second advent of the Son of God. Oh, well. So Mrs. White, in her epic book, The Great Controversy, I'm not sure if it's an epic book, but anyway, uh, places Miller alongside the great Protestant reformers such as Luther and Whitecliffe. In that book, she de- devotes an entire chapter to the American reformer. She compares Miller's calling to preach his theories on the date of Christ's return with God's call of the prophet uh, Eli- Elisha. As Elisha was called following his oxen in the field to receive the mantle of consecration to the prophetic office, as was William Miller called to leave his plough and open to the people the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So what mystery of God did Miller have for the people? That Christ was going to return in 1843. (laughs) Well... He didn't return in 1843, and again, that's uh, 
So, as I understand it, some of the Christian uh, ministries was, you know, writing against some of these claims. Um, so anyway, uh, and what mysteries of God did uh, of God did Miller have for the people that Christ was going to return in 1843? Uh, in 1818, he reached the solemn conviction that in t about 25 years, Christ would appear for the redemption of his people. And thus, Ellen White makes it clear that Miller was called to preach a message that was incorrect, a message that would cause the few who believed and accepted it to suffer a great disappointment when Jesus failed to return as planned. Knowing what we do of William Miller, knowing that he set false dates for Christ's return, knowing that these, f uh oh, my problems again with the according. Yeah. Okay, let's giants of the Christian faith. Was it really a great reformer? Question mark. And again, some of those uh, shepherds out there was warning about these things in regards to William Miller and did see that there was problems. And who was correct? Well, these you know these shepherds, other shepherds, was correct. You know Jesus never returned at that point. You know at the point of time. So at least it shows some in in integrity from the other preachers that was right. And yet, uh, some wouldn't, wouldn't actually, you know, just went along with this, you know? I, you know, it's in, I think it's incredible how people will just cling to something and just continue to, you know. Uh, but of course they got the Sabbath correct. And in regards of some of the food laws, the Seven Adventists does seem to go by the food laws of the Bible. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure in regards of food sacrifice to false God. I still think they might have a problem in regards of that because they, you know, will go to the words of Paul. So, but of course, then you could also use Paul for, you know, being allowed to eat everything and anything, you know. So, um, anyway, let's uh, see here. Um... So it goes on. Compare the contrast Miller versus Protestant reformers. All of the great Protestant reformers were leaders in their churches, well educated, of outstanding scholarly ability, and have far reaching influence. Ellen White mentions these facts in The Great Controversy. Uh, Whitecliffe, Whitecliffe received a liberal education, and with him, if the fear of the Lord was the beginning of wisdom, he was noted at college for his fervent piety as well uh, as for his remarkable talents and sound scholarship. scholarship. In his thirst for knowledge, he sought to become acquainted with every branch of learning. He was educated in scholastic philosophy, in the canons of the church and in the civil law, especially that of his own country. Da, 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 the power of his gen genius and the extent and thoroughness of his knowledge commanded the respect of both friends and foes. His adherents saw with satisfaction that that champion stood foremost among the leaning minds of the nation. And then we have Haas and Jerome. Haas studied at the provincial school and then repaired, repaired to the university at Pro receiving admission as a charity, a charity scholar. At uh, da, 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 the university, Ha soon distinguished himself by his untiring application and rapid progress, while his blameless life and gentle winning deporting gained him universal esteem. Da, 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 da. After completing his college course, he entered the priesthood and rap rapidly attaining to eminence, he soon became attached to the court of the king. He was also made professor and afterwards rector of the university where he had received his education. In a few years, the humble charity scholar had become the pride of his country and his name was renowned throughout Europe. You know, but, you know, you don't need to, to be educated to be, uh, 
you know, just look at the look at the, the world tensions and all that. They knew the Bible, and that was the you know, and others. The Bible was you know is 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 the one that makes wise. You know, um, just be careful of Paul, because he will lead you into lawlessness, and that's not good. Uh, brilliancy of genius, eloquence, and learning gifts, gifts, uh, whatever. You know, uh, to make, you know, the plow, plow, what do you call it? The, the plow boy, you know, know more of scripture than the so-called Pope, you know? Um, as long as the people have the scriptures, they can grow. If they can listen and read, and that's the whole point of going to school, you don't have to have a great education to, uh, you just have to read the Bible and listen to the Bible and grow in the Bible, you know, so, so putting so much effort or, or input on, you know, it, it, you know, educated people, I, I don't know, it's just, uh, you know, Andreas Karstadt, you know, at some point, uh, he was pretty radical and he's called a radical, yeah, well, he was called a radical anyway, um, but radical is not bad, radical is pretty good, I think. And he wanted to be called Brother Andreas. Even he was the professor and actually over the over Luther because Karstadt was the professor. He was the, you know, who, who, the one running uh, the thing in Wittenberg. And as I understand, it gave the professor title to Martin Luther and he had himself three professor titles. Um, but he wanted to be called Brother and not, you know, Having he didn't want to have an esteemed uh, title anymore, and you know, sadly Luther came back and uh, future things. Um, if uh, but yeah, you know, cause that was you know doing things that seemed too radical for Martin Luther. So Luther came back and turned you know, stop the pro process and actually turn things. And we have Swingley and we have coming out of that, we have the Anabaptist, you know, and of course all of them play a, a part. Um, but anyway, so, and they were called radicals as well, the Anabaptist. And I think the Anabaptist was the one that came closest to the, to, to, uh, to truth. You know, came the closest to, uh, uh, Anyway, um, Luther at the education uh, at the University of Wittenberg, the, the, the decree of Doctor of Divinity, and I think that was given by Andreas Karlstadt to him. Uh, left Evra, a man extensive professor in the University of Paris. So of Tyndale arose to defend the truth. The Ridleys and Cranma followed. These leaders in the English Reformation were men of learning. The Reformation, the reformers often reference among all classes, from the homes of artisans and peasants to the palaces. You can do that, you know. I don't. I, I, this is this is just this 